What is going on, everyone? My name is Jared, and welcome to the Best See the Track at the NASCAR season finale at Phoenix. Today, joining me is not one, but two guests. First of all, he's a senior editor and race winner, Zach Sterniolo, and podcast host and TikTok influencer, Davey Siegel. Gentlemen, it is great to have you here um, on the show. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not wrong with that TikTok influencer, but it is the I, final. I'm not race. an influencer, Jared. I'm not an influencer. Don't don't put that on me. <laughs> I mean, you've got quite a few views, and you're on the NASCAR channel with your TikToks. I can't go wrong with that. So we got we got to flex on this show. So, but today is the final race of the 2021 season. It's the championship four. We got Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, and Martin Truex Jr in the final four, in the championship four. Who goes ahead? I know Larson has been fast in those. He's on the pole, and he had the best five-lap average, too. I know you guys shot your picks on the podcast. Does, does it still hold up while being down there, or are you changing your minds? I go back and forth because when you look at the speed charts, it seems like Hendrick has a little bit of an advantage. But at the same time, Drivers Hendrick and JGR were saying that practice may not hold too much weight in terms of what goes on in the actual race, and it doesn't really matter where you start. We saw that last year with Chase Elliott, right? Dale's inspection, starts in the back, didn't matter, mowed his way through the field and got up to the front and, and won the race and won the championship. So I don't know about you, Zach, but I, I think I'm still going to stick with Martin Truex Jr. I know that it may be an unpopular pick. Something just tells me he's going to be able to fly under the radar. And I think even though they weren't great in practice – I still think that that ultimately will help them in the grand scheme when it comes to adjusting on the car as the race goes on. So I'm sticking with my pick. I'm not super confident in it, but I'm sticking with it. Uh, I'm sticking with mine as well. Denny Hamlin has been really strong on these 750 horsepower tracks this season. Uh, the, the numbers back that. I still feel like that confidence, the anger really that uh, he's been, uh, you know, that's been fueling him this whole week. Yeah. I think that comes into play uh, – during today's race, um, he starts six. That's not too far back. We'll see what kind of car he has in traffic. That's we're going to find that out pretty early. I feel like, and we're also going to learn really quickly how aggressive he's going to be on the start of this race. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but, uh, I'm two for two on the weekend so far. I picked Ben Rhodes and I picked uh, Daniel Hemrick. So hoping for three for three and I'm zero for two. So I'm hoping for not zero for three. I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> Yeah, I was, oh, I'm, like I said, I was 0 for 2, too. I had John Hunter Nemechek. I said he was going to win if he didn't have any problems. Guess what? He had problems. And then Sindrick, I picked him, and basically it was a drag race, and he lost it. Um, but, like I said, the championship war is the big storyline, obviously, coming into this weekend. They're, all eyes are on them. But there's a whole bunch of other storylines that's happening. And I know this is going to be the last race for Gen 6. We still have some silly season moves that are undetermined for 2022 season. What storyline are you looking at to follow that is not the championship for? There's a lot. Like you said, Gen 6 is the big one. And with that comes the elimination of five lug nuts. The pit stop, as we know, it, it's going to, I guess, exist in Xfinity and trucks for the foreseeable future. But it's not going to be the same in the Cup Series. The sounds of the cars, those are not going to be the same as this year. The center door numbers, which I forgot until... I saw Jeff Buck Sweet who's sitting over there. Uh, that's not going to be a thing next year for the Cup Series either. And I know even though we're going to have some of these things for Xfinity and Trucks and ARCA, it's not going to be the same at the top level of stock car racing in the world. And it's a fundamental shift and a fundamental change from what has been the norm and what has worked for the last two, three decades. So even though the Championship Four, rightfully so, is going to overshadow the end of this era of stock car racing, I'm going to try to soak it in a little bit, whether it's on pit road at the end of the race, in the middle, whatever, just the sound of the cars, the five looking up pit stop, looking at the number in the center of the door. It's the end of an era for a lot of different reasons. So I know that didn't really answer your question, but just there's so many different things that are coming to an end and good things are on the horizon, obviously, but it doesn't mean you can't really sit back and kind of appreciate what we're not going to be able to see anymore and what's gotten us to where we are right now in sports history. And just to piggyback off of that, I feel like, um, you know, Ryan Newman, we talk about him. He's going to be going to be uh, out of that number six car in 2022. And the way that he spoke with media yesterday, I don't know that I've seen at least not in a really, really long no. time from Ryan Newman. He had a lot to say. A lot to say. <laughs> and he was not afraid to say it. No, not at all. And I think that kind of insight 
um, he was very reflective and that kind of Definitely. really set the tone for what I feel like today is going to feel like as Davey was talking about to, to end this era. I know that's, that's another storyline too, is what is Ryan Newman's role. He's out of the ride with Roush Fenway racing with Keselowski taking over. Um, there's not a lot of opportunities for Newman to per se, but we'll see what um, unravels in the postseason. But hopefully, like I said, if this is the last race, hopefully Newman does well too. Gentlemen, we got to do our picks. And I want to drop a stat for you. In the last two championship races, to keep in mind, a non championship four driver between Phoenix last year and Homestead two years ago have led a combined total of 19 laps. Out of, like I said, championship four has been dominant. And I think Larson's going to be dominant again. He's shown it this weekend, too. He's going to be capping off the weekend with a win in a championship. Who do you see is going to be in victory lane at the end of Sunday at Phoenix? I'm just thinking with True. I've gone this far. I picked him at the start of the playoffs. I picked him at the start of the week. I picked him on media day. I picked him at the start of the show. I mean, I got to stick with him. Again, I don't feel great about it, but I'd be doing myself a disservice if I didn't stick with him. So he's the unpopular pick, but I'm rolling with the 19. I feel like Denny delivers today. We saw what he was able to do here in 2019 when he uh, had to win to get into the championship for that year. Um, he's got the same fuel this year, if not even, he's, I, I feel like he's even more amped up. This he's year. hungry. Yeah, he really is. He really is. So I, I'm going with Denny. I was about to say, I, I'm like, there's other competitors. Penske's going to ha have some strong cars. Ryan Blaney's performed well. But you're still picking to the uh, ideology that a championship four driver is going to win this race. We saw in the truck series, Ben Rhodes didn't win yep. the race, but he won the championship. But like I said, the Cup Series is a whole different animal. Gentlemen, it was great to have you on here. Like I said, for one last bestie, the track two for this season. And from everyone here at FrenchStretch.com, subscribe to our channel, like this video, follow Davey at Davey Center, Zach at Zachster, and at Front Stretch on Twitter. And from everyone here, have a great race weekend.